Hi, we welcome everyone to the third webinar organized by my CFO, a market leader in the CFO outsourcing industry. The topic of discussion today will be key challenges faced by a CFO in an Indian subsidiary of an MNC. We have industry veteran Mr. Tapishnu Chaudhary, Senior Vice President and Senior CFO Partner with us to share his knowledge on the same. Tapishnu professionally better known as TAPS is a key member of MyCFO's leadership team and manages client delivery for several key MyCFO clients in addition to active involvement in new business development. A chartered accountant and a chartered and cost accountant by qualification, he brings in 16 plus years of progressive leadership experience resulting in a deep understanding and knowledge of global businesses across various sectors. He describes himself as an extremely high energy, strategic and innovative leader who leads by example. He has consistently produced strong results throughout his career with a high degree of integrity, dedication and organized communication skills. He is blessed with acumen for identifying business opportunities, setting up startup ventures and taking it to the next level which makes him stand out from the crowd. After having articled from PricewaterhouseCoopers as a part of his training for a period of three years from 1994. He has been associated with several 500, Fortune 500 companies like Computer Associates, AIG, Zenta and Hirco developments across various industries like IT, insurance, BPO and real estate in senior leadership roles augmenting the business of the organization. In his last stint, Tapishnu worked as the Chief Financial Officer of NCO India Private Limited. He has successfully completed two major business acquisitions. He is extremely passionate towards sports and actively participated and won awards for his school and college. He is married and has a five-year-old son. I would now uh, request Mr. Chaudhary to take over the, the webinar. Uh, thank you, Megha. <coughs> And uh, thank you everybody for uh, registering and joining this webinar. Uh, my name is Tapishnu Chaudhary and I'll be uh, presenting a, a session on the challenges of a CFO in an Indian subsidiary of an MNC. Uh, starting uh, with my first slide, if you, if you come to the left hand top corner, I have depicted a CFO uh, as he actually walks through a tightrope. Uh, you would appreciate that you know over the last decade or so, the function of a CFO had actually evolved uh, from a bookkeeper uh, to a business manager. So everything that a CFO does, you know, is actively watched and scrutinized, and he's been made responsible for all major business decisions, along with the CEO of the company. The problem becomes, in my opinion, more cumbersome when uh, he hates the finance function of uh, MNC. So, so basically, in my opinion, the CFO has a very, very, you know, tight rope to walk. And anything that he does, you know, on half an inch uh, error, you know, the margin of error is very, very slim. So that will make him fall from that uh, cliff. And so will the company. Uh, that's why I think the importance of the CFO in an environment, uh, Indian environment, is extremely important. I'll move on to the next slide. Uh, MNCs have actually you know, made India the favorite destination. I have tried to point out MNCs who have come and set up shop in India. MNCs are basically uh, companies who have operations in more than one country out of their own home country. And uh, India has been one of the favorite destinations from uh, for a very for a quite uh, some time. Uh, one of the some of the major MNCs that operate in India are Coca-Cola, Boeing, Google, Citibank, uh, and so on and so forth. MNCs in India can actually grow by uh, a two-pronged strategy. One is uh, India has a huge consumer demand, which all the agency companies cash in on. 
The second is, you know, to tap the resources of India, which which is basically uh, the reason why most of the BPO have started coming to India. India being the second largest populated country of the China <coughs> and has a reasonable, you know, English speaking population. Most of the MNCs in the US and UK thought that India would be the favorite destination for them to set up shop and operate economically. I would move on to my next slide where I start off, you know, with the key challenges that uh, the Indian CFO has in his hand when he's taking over the function of the substitute. Now, the way I have structured my presentation is uh, I would run through the key challenges and probably, you know, towards the end of the presentation, I will uh, give you a solution as to how these challenges can be handled. And then, towards the end of the presentation, I'll probably take your question and answers, if I can answer them right. When a company sets up shop in India, <coughs> there are various parameters uh, with which the decision is being made. And once a decision is being made, the CFO is the first person to coordinate with the inter-representatives of the parent company. And what I mean to say is, you know, there are a lot of Indian laws which are not understood by the foreign entrepreneurs or the foreign investors. Uh, example being the FIBB, uh, the rules that govern the bank uh, money money movement, the things that uh, they take using the economic, the socio-political and socio-economic structure of the country are something that the CFO of the company has to go and talk to with the uh, with, with, with the you know parent company. The idea is you know you should for getting a venture right you must and this is a must. I repeat this is a must because the expectation at the start has to be set right. There are many pitfalls if you don't set the expectations right. Like example being India being a company, a country governed by a lot of democracies and great techs, it is for the CFO to go and take up this matter with the parent company and explain it to them. The fact, the fact, the fact is, you know, that all these scenarios must, different scenarios which, which may happen, has to be built in, in your business strategy model and because they may have financial implications. And if the CFO does not do it right the first time, it will, it will be very, very late in the day before the parent company realizes its flaws and starts doubting the you know, competency of the CFO. So my first and most important uh, role of a CFO is to coordinate the setup process and set the expectations right with the parent. The second challenge that a normal uh, CFO faces is in terms of reporting. You would often hear that most of any multinational companies have calendar year as a reporting year. Whereas in India, we are governed by the tax laws and the accounting year is basically from a period of April to March. My experience of having worked with different multinationals are that most of the companies are reluctant to let go their accounting year because the results of the Indian entity, the subsidiary, has to be somewhere reported upward and merged and consolidated with the results of the patent company. This gives you know the CFO a major headache in terms of closing the books. So the books will have to be closed twice in the entire whole year. The Indian statutory books will have to keep separate while the parent books will have to be kept separate and there will be certain additional entries that both these entities will have to go through to make those adjustments for those relevant countries. This, in according to me, is a pain that the CFO has to do. The third is basically a case where, where if, the, if the parent is listed abroad, uh, say in a London stock exchange or in, in a US stock exchange, uh, compliance in the subsidiary becomes all the more rigorous. And it is, the, it is, it is after the uh, fiasco of WorldCom and Enron, 
the SOX compliance of the Indian subsidiaries have become very, very stringent. It is the responsibility of the CFO to see through that all the compliances in terms of uh, finances, uh, money laundering, uh, Companies Act, uh, Income Tax Act, and all relevant statutes are being complied to and adhered to so that, you know, at the end of the day, people and the reporting authorities do not get surprised by the results. I move on to my next slide. <clears throat> it, is, it is, India is a very, uh, I would say, developing country. You know, uh, in, in the BRICS economy, India is actually the second largest uh, country with having the second largest growth path after China. So obviously, when MNCs come here, they have to decide as to the strategy of entering the, entering the country. So the strategy may either be on profit or because of the growth. Profit in the sense when, when an MNC walks into India, they may actually you know, tap the con consumption and, and make additional revenue out of that. And that should actually help they meet their you know, fund flow requirements abroad. But the problem is in India, repatriation of money is governed by a Companies Act rules called the Companies Declaration of Dividend Rules, which uh, in no year can exceed your profits. Uh, by doing that, the Indian subsidy somehow you know, impairs its ability to uh, repatriate money outside India. Even though in some years, you know, and, and, and the issue of a, that, that lies with the CFO is how much to repatriate, what to repatriate, when to repatriate, and you know, whether to use the money lying in the form of asset acquisition or you know, subsidizing and funding the parent company to ensure they pay back. This is a question that haunts the CFO uh, through the times. And uh, obviously, uh, this is a decision that the CFO takes along with the CEO of a company. Statutory compliance in India uh, is a major, major obstacle that everybody faces. In the recent past, the Companies Act 2013 has been uh, implemented. And most of the companies are you know, uh, struggling to get uh, to find out as to where they have been non-compliant. MNCs being MNCs, as I said, are very, very, you know, particular in terms of compliance. And they would not accept a single uh, remark on the issue of the compliances. So unless you are very, very vigilant and up to speed, all these statutory compliances can actually come to haunt you. The CFO of the company has to be the flag bearer in terms of uh, addressing the statutory compliances, ensuring that the balance sheet is clean and uh, without any adverse remarks. I, would, I want to highlight here that apart from the Companies Act, the government has taken up a, a huge this thing in terms of you know, rolling out some major, major amend amendments in the near future. One of them is probably the GST, which will, which will eliminate a lot of uh, rate takers, but again, you know, that that would throw up a serious debate within the states. Currently, the way uh, companies are structured shows that you know statutory compliances are only effective first April two thousand fourteen. So. So basically, if you have been compliant during this whole year, you would have to, you, you, would, you would be termed as compliant in your next balance sheet. But the problem is, the government has erroneously, or uh, uh, in order to redress a couple of uh, things that happened in the past, have gone ahead and, you know, gazetted uh, certain sections of the Companies Act for the current year as well which leaves no time with the CFO of the current company to address that. This only means that CFO has to, has to, has to take help 
of companies like uh, Price Waterhouse or outsourcing companies, which have extremely good knowledge of uh, statutory compliances and who are considered to be experts in their particular field. In most of the cases of an MNC company, the global parent strategy is something that dictates the India plans. <clears throat> the global parent, as soon as they come in, want to implement controls and system in line with the global standards. My experiences say that even if the company is uh, a startup company, uh, the global company will trust an ERP on the subsidiary from day one, which, which in my opinion may be an overkill. Every global standard that is adopted in the subsidiary cannot adhere to the global standards. It has to be tweaked in a way uh, to suit the requirements of the country in which the MNC is set in. For this particular, uh, in this particular case, the Indian, uh, Indian rules. Because of this, you know, there's a lack of understanding. So SAP, in a global scenario, will have a global chart of accounts. Whereas the Indian, Indian scenario will require a very different chart of accounts with regard to uh, certain statutory deductions. Now this difference results in a gap of understanding, uh, which delays your decision making process. Also, by implementing these sort of controls, the MNCs would uh, thrust a very limited autonomy on the top MNC managers. I would think that in most of the cases, had the MNCs been a bit more thoughtful, they would have, you know, they would have allowed the Indian subsidiary to run for about a year with moderate controls and then gradually start implementing controls depending on the business, the size of the business, the nature of the business, which is commensurate. Uh, in most of the cases, as you would see, uh, the MNCs would insist on the subsidiary companies having an expat. While this is a very expensive proposition, there are other implications as well. The CFO, uh, if he's an Indian CFO, he and the CEO, who is mostly an expat CEO in a startup case, will have to have you know, very, very regular the issues. They were the fact that the CEO of the company is mainly to drive the business of the company and will mainly focus on the top line. It is very, very unlikely, and I repeat, very, very unlikely for a CFO to have a compliance mindset. While the CEO, CFO of the company, will have to work necessarily with the CEO and also ensure the compliances, uh, the funding, the reporting, everything of the company is as per the global standards. I will turn on to my next slide. Uh, very interesting in terms of management control. As I said, most of the, C most of the companies, most of the MNCs I mean, have a global parent strategy which dictates the India plans. The, at this point, it is essential for every company to decide the ownership of the management divorce uh, uh, scenarios. There are two situations that may arise out of uh, this controllership issue. One is where the owner, the parent, is too interfering and uh, it defeats the spirit of the corporate management. But if a CFO is strong and he demonstrates his uh, skills over a period of time, then probably things get better. The flip side of this is probably, you know, control. Most of the agencies believe that control implemented at the start is uh, something that is well begun and hence it should be implemented. What they probably do not understand is, you know, control at the start makes the top agency managers feel strangulated and the gas per break and probably in the bargain, 
leave the country. Uh, most of the MNCs in India adopt a rigid practice and uh, insist evaluating India like any other market. They do not recognize that early enough that India is a price and quality conscious market. And hence, everything that you do in India will have to be properly tweaked to ensure that the attraction and the traction for the product or the service is in a level where the Indians are able to accept that. However, that being said, you know, as time goes by, most of the MNCs, uh, say a Pepsi or um, a Nestle, have adopted to products that Indians like. Pepsi has come up with Blair Pepsi uh, or a product which is a junk food which will never ever find in the US. This is, this is called tweaking uh, the product to suit the Indian market. In another scenario, there is the owner, the management is basically, you know, not concerned with how the company, the subsidiary is run. The parent company actually takes no interest in the subsidiary except in declaration of dividends. Here, the typical situation is the local management uh, runs the company in a way they like and they may not necessarily roll up with the global parent strategy as it were we used to say. And if that does not happen uh, at a later stage in a point in time, there would be different uh, consequences for the MNC. If it's a listed MNC, the consequences of non-compliance are very, very harsh. And it is here the CFO faces serious controllership and proprietary challenges unless the CEO has a compliance focus. I mean, the CEO of the company is mainly interested in driving the top line of the company. And, and that is so for any startup company. I mean, that is true for any startup company. In the initial stages, we, we are mainly focused on driving the top line without concerning too much about the controls and the, and, and, and the cost that are associated with it. By the time that we realize that you know, the costs are high and we need to uh, cut down on the costs or things like that, or we need to you know, have a lean structure, it, it may be too late in the day. The MNC would have already started losing money, and the only person to be blamed for that is the CFO. The CFO is a gatekeeper, and for him, it's a double-edged sword. He can't uh, resist the growth of the company, but at the same time, he cannot relax the control of the company. The CFO of the company is a gatekeeper, the CFO of the company is the owner, the CFO of the company is the trustee of the CFO's, of the MNC's money. Uh, there is another scenario which is, which is very, very unlikely that the CFO of the first CFO of the company is an expert. This, this scenario is a bit, uh, maybe a bit disastrous because uh, at the end of the day, you know, the expats, expat CFO will have no adequate knowledge on any of the Indian statutory laws. This makes it even more difficult for him to assess things on the ground. As a result of which, he goes and hires consultants, uh, which are big folds or which are in the form of uh, consultants who have reasonable good knowledge on the Indian statutes. The, it may be an aggregation of all Indian, the consultants may be went to the table in terms of aggregation of all Indian laws. And or uh, maybe individual consultants for individual apps at different points in time. I'm not saying that the consultants are not required, but I'm only trying to say that the CFO's job is to have a well-grounded knowledge of the Indian laws. So that, you know, irrespective of the, what the consultants say, at the end of the day, he can take an informed decision. Uh, Indian taxation laws uh, are one of the most difficult to interpret. Uh, Vodafone um, is uh, bearing the brunt of that. And it is, it is one of the most difficult uh, laws to get passed, most difficult laws to get implemented, most difficult laws 
in the in the whole world probably you know, in the form of rigidity and sometimes you know it's it's a form over substance the indian ceo, CEO may want to take override controllership by taking advantage of uh, lack of understanding of the indian laws so basically uh, the indian the, the indian ceo if it's indian ceo uh, he may take advantage of the ignorance of uh, the foreign CFO and uh, I mean deal with the situation in a way which is not best suited uh, for a company of uh, immense station. Now with that you know I would probably conclude my presentations but I would also you know uh, give you an idea as to how best probably from my ex I mean my experience uh, we would like to handle all these issues, a couple of these issues definitely. Uh, in majority of the cases, you know, where the management control is an issue, where uh, the parent has a hands-off uh, approach, I think the solution lies in, uh, in uh, you know, intelligent meeting between the board and the CFO ahead of the board meeting. It becomes very embarrassing for the CFO uh, if uh, some questions that are asked in a board meeting, which is a bit uncomfortable in the presence of the auditors. So it is important for the CFO to take the board along with him and explain to them why the results look the way they look, so that you know these sort of issues are addressed ahead of the board meeting in special committees. I would think that this is one of a you know better way to uh, avoid conflict between the ownership uh, between the parent and the CFO, and uh, that is the way the CFO should take along uh, the board along with him. Uh, this is this is probably one of the solutions. There may be many others, but this is this is one thing that came to my mind, and this is probably one of the ways I have tried to manage. Uh, uh, a parent uh, from uh, asking uncomfortable questions ahead of the board. With this, I end my presentation and uh, leave the forum to ask questions if they have. Hello. Thank you so much, uh, Tapinshnu, for uh, the wonderful presentation. We hope that everyone did uh, take away something from what was shared uh, by Mr. Chaudhary on such a complex subject. Um, in case of any further specific questions, uh, we request you uh, all to mail it to Mr. Chaudhary's ID, which was uh, flashed in the beginning, uh, in the last slide. So. Mr. Jody, can I request you to put it on the last slide for everyone's uh, easy viewing? Sure. Yeah. yeah. I will. The last slide. Yeah. In case uh, are there are any questions that have not been answered in this uh, session, um, you can directly email me. Uh, at topishno at wealthtree.in that is present on the last slide of this. Yeah, I, I this think the yeah, so this is the ID which uh, can be used to mail directly to Mr. Chaudhary in case of any specific queries. Uh, we hope you um, had an informative session during this webinar. Uh, thank you so much everyone. We shall now end the webinar. Thank you very much. Stop, stop recording. <laughs>